They asked, who am I? I said, I'm next. They asked me where I'm from. I replied, rock bottom. They asked me what I do. I said, it's simple. Whatever it takes. You see, I suffered from addiction and mental health issues for over 20 years of my life. I've been hospitalized more times than I can count. I spent over seven years of my life homeless and hopeless on the streets of Kensington, Philadelphia, and nearly the same amount of time in jails and institutions. See, I accepted that way of life because I never saw a way out, and most don't ever make it out. I lost everything I've owned multiple times, whether it was material things, but more importantly, I lost my family, my children, and myself. I didn't want to live. I didn't care if I woke up the next day. I was suicidal. I attempted suicide more than a few times. But I woke up every time in yet another hospital bed, followed by a psychiatric hospital. I lived a negative lifestyle. I was a problem to my community, I sold drugs, and I hurt others along the way. My story is full of pain and rain, and not just physical pain from stabbings and fights, but emotionally and mentally. I had no regard for myself, my life, or any consequences I would face as a result of the way that I was living. My problem all along was a spiritual problem and disconnected from my maker and not ever even believing in myself. Thinking that I wasn't worthy, thinking I was a victim, thinking my life will never get better. I couldn't have been more wrong. You see, I don't know if you believe in a judgment day or just karma, but karma is like a restaurant with no menus. You get served what you deserve. Your thoughts that turn into actions that you put out into the universe mirrors what's given back to you. If you think negatively, hurt other people, lie, manipulate, steal, and kill, you're not going to be successful. You'll be another statistic. There came a time in my life where I came extremely too close to just being another statistic and a newspaper obituary. In 2014, someone tried to take my life. I put myself in a situation, given the life that I was living, that almost put me to death. I was hit from behind with a hammer, which shattered my cranium. I laid on a concrete on this Philadelphia street for a few hours, dying, completely unconscious and bleeding out. I was rushed into brain surgery, where they removed the left side of my skull and replaced it with titanium. I woke up days later and didn't even know who I was. I looked in the mirror and saw a complete stranger with half his head shaved and a horseshoe-shaped scar closed with 30 staples. I looked at the board on the wall and it read patient name, John Doe. I lost every ability I had. I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk, and I couldn't write. This was the most traumatic and painful thing I've ever dealt with in my life, but it turns out, It was the best thing that ever happened to me. You see, I was reborn in that ICU room that day. I had a spiritual awakening. I couldn't talk, but someone was talking to me. And the man speaking to me was not of this world. And on that day, I made a decision. Enough was enough. The man's voice in my head told me, forgive them for they know not what they do. I realized I was in direct contact with my creator and truly gave me sight. And not just sight, but insight. It was time to take accountability and full responsibility for the pain and hurt that I've caused in my life and in others. I didn't pick up a drug or a drink since, but that was just the beginning of the battle. It took me the whole next year to rewire my brain, relearn how to walk and talk. But you see, this time, I was given the guidance to do it all differently. I had to change one thing, and that was everything. I realized I had a purpose. I realized there was a mission for what I was put on this planet here to complete. 
and God never left my side through all the trials and tribulations. I just didn't see it. So after a year of intense physical therapy, vocational therapy, and speech therapy, I was still not where I felt I needed to be mentally. I checked myself into a psychiatric hospital to better understand and to begin not just my recovery, but my discovery. I was there for three months. I was cognitively tested three separate times, and each time the result shows that I was mentally handicapped. The doctors finally gave me their best suggestion, and that was to live the rest of my life in a traumatic brain injury institution. I said no. I couldn't accept that. I had an image of a nurse pushing me in a wheelchair up to a window and staring at it all day at 32 years old. They told me I'd never make anything of myself or even make any progress. See, statistically, most people that suffer a similar injury die within five years or decline severely in mental capacity. I am not a statistic. I'm an underdog. I'm a messenger. I'm a vessel. I carry a message everywhere I go. All my life I was told all the things I couldn't or wouldn't do. That is my motivation. I'm proving everyone wrong who ever doubted me and didn't believe in me. But that's okay because the day I finally decided to actually believe in myself, things started to change. And I didn't come this far just to come this far. They told me I wouldn't speak. Well, I can, and I do it on a professional level. I couldn't write and I'm a published author. They didn't think I'd walk, but here I am, walking out my dreams. The world is full of givers and takers. The takers eat better, but the givers, they sleep better. I was a taker most of my life, but not anymore. I give, I give back. I give back to those still sick and suffering. I give back to my community. I go back to hell to bring a piece of heaven to it, and I give God all the glory. I've earned my family relationships back, and all my children are in my life. You know, a friend of mine once said, I never went viral, but I've been a role model, and I can show you what it looks like to put down the bottle, and that hit different. I don't speak for successful people who seem to have everything figured out. I speak to the lost, the unwanted, the forgotten, the broken, the ones that don't care whether they live or die. Because that was me, and I promise you there's a way out. I'll speak life to the day that they bury me and nothing and no one will stop me. I don't welcome struggles into my life, but that's what molded me. That's what made me who I was created to be, the struggle. There's still days and situations that arise in my life that I might not like or don't quite understand but I push through. I know that on the other side of these struggles are power and inner strength. My why is so strong, I'll die for what I believe in, and that's something that no one can take from me. So if you're struggling, I need you to rise. I need you to rise above what anyone else may say about you and believe in your fucking self. It has to start in your mind, followed by the steps and actions in the right direction to better your circumstances. But no one is going to do it for you. I'll say this, if I can do it, trust and believe me when I tell you that anyone can do it. Pull out the greatness that you have inside you and never quit. The best investment you can make is to invest in yourself because that is what pays the best interest. Let your pain give you purpose. With every ounce of your being, I need you to know that you are not alone. And this is not a me thing, it's a we thing. And together, we can accomplish anything. So now they ask me, who am I? And I respond, I'm the one. <laughs>